Uh, a paper published in 2011 in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition showed that the component of the American diet that's changed the most in the past century is actually soybean oil. More than corn oil, more than animal fat, even more than fructose. It's actually increased a thousandfold. Since soybean oil is made up of primarily of polyunsaturated fatty acids, um, the most important one of which is linoleic acid, we wanted to see if soybean oil and linoleic acid could be contributing to the obesity epidemic. So we found that mice that were fed a diet that was high in soybean oil, they gained much more weight and became glucose intolerant as well as diabetic as compared to the mice that were fed a high coconut oil diet. We then treated mice with a low linoleic acid, high oleic, genetically modified oil prepared by DuPont called Plenish. And we found that mice on that diet, they did not get, gain as much weight as the mice on the conventional soybean oil diet did, but they did become glucose intolerant. And um, the other thing was that these mice did not develop any insulin resistance. And we should also add that the, we saw some amazing effects in the livers of both the conventional soybean oil and the plenish, very large lipid droplets and hepatocyte ballooning, which is a sign of liver injury. Um, so that was another way in which the two oils were very similar. Both the conventional soybean oil and the plenish oil from DuPont, they're both genetically modified, but with a genetic modification that is uh, different than what we're studying here. That modification is resistance to the herbicide Roundup, um, and these plants were made by Monsanto several decades ago. More than 90% of all the soybeans in this country are resistant to Roundup. So DuPont used these these were the seeds that the farmers liked to use. They grew very well, and DuPont used that seed as the basis for the genetic modification. The genetic modification that, that DuPont put in that's relevant for this study is that they block the production of linoleic acid, um, and thereby um, decreasing with lower linoleic acid, there'd be less trans fats and a longer shelf life. And this was actually a great idea. The net result is that the fatty acid composition of the plenish oil is very similar to olive oil, which is considered to be the healthiest of all oils. So it was the perfect comparison for us because there are many things in oil aside from the fatty acids. There's phytosterols, there's other components. That's why oils don't all taste the same. So by able, since we were able to use a soybean oil that had low linoleic acid versus one, that a nat, one that's naturally high in linoleic acid, we could actually look at the effects of linoleic acid. And we found that linoleic acid was, seemed to be responsible for the insulin resistance, but it did not seem to play a big role in the obesity um, or in the effects we saw in the liver or, or in glucose intolerance. We're all, in the U.S., we're all consuming way too much soybean oil, in our opinion. Um, we're now consuming, on average, um, up to 8 to 10 percent of linoleic acid, whereas at the beginning of the century, we we're only consuming about 2 percent. The paleo diet, which is a very healthy diet, you only need about 1 percent linoleic acid. Now, linoleic acid is an essential fatty acid. We have to get some. Every animal has to get it eventually from a plant, but we don't need that much of it. Human beings have never taken, in the history of the human race, we've never taken in this much soybean oil. So it is a concern. Well, yeah, coconut oil in our studies actually turned out to be quite, uh, did not really have any negative side effects. We were actually quite surprised. Um, that being said, that there are uh, more and more papers in the literature showing that coconut oil is healthy for you. Now, coconut oil is mainly saturated fat. But the type of saturated fat in coconut oil is different from, it's not exactly the same as that in animal fat. Also, animal fat or animal lard also tends to have cholesterol. So not all saturated fats are the same. Not all unsaturated fats are the same. And then there's also olive oil. Olive oil is definitely a very healthy oil. And, but we haven't compared it side by side with plenish, and, which is what we're doing now. The genetic modification introduced by DuPont into plenish is actually a good one. Um, it, the mice were less diabetic um, than the conventional soybean oil. We have not compared uh, the conventional soybean oil or plenish to organic soybean oil. That is something that we would like to do. It's actually a little bit more complicated um, than it might seem. First of all, it's very difficult to find organic soybean oil, although the USDA does have a list of, of potential providers. 
The other thing is that there could be other differences other than the genetic modification because those seeds would have been bred differently, they would have acquired different traits, so it would be very difficult to know exactly what in the soybean oil is different in the organic versus the conventional one, but it's not an impossible thing to do and, and we would like to do it. No, actually soybeans per se are not bad for you. They're a great source of protein. Um, they're a good source of isoflavones. I, I drink soy milk every day and I love tofu. What we're talking about here is soybean oil. Um, and that obviously comes from the soybean, but it's a much more concentrated aspect of it. So we're talking about soybean oil, not soybeans per se, not tofu, not soy sauce. The problem is, is that olive oil um, comes from olive trees and coconut oil comes from coconut trees, these are much more difficult to grow than soybeans. Uh, there, Spain, which is the largest producer of olive oil, only produces about one million tons of olive oil a year. Uh, the USDA says that the amount of worldwide production of coconut oil is on the order of around three million tons. In contrast, more than 40 million tons of soybean oil was produced worldwide in 2007. So soybeans just grow much better and much faster, they're easier to grow. So going forward, if we're going to use a lot of soybean oil, we, may have to cons we might have to consider additional genetic modifications to actually make it more healthy. And this we could do once we find out what the component of soybean oil that's not good for you, it is possible that someone could could genetically modify it even further to make it even healthier. Well, it's difficult to find organic soybean oil, number one, um, and I always cook only with olive oil at home, uh, and I think that's just a better choice. Uh, the, the issue is, is that in general with processed foods and restaurants, that's where a lot of people are being exposed to it. Vegetable oil, which is the main source in one's home that people are exposed to soybean oil, is cheaper than olive oil and other types of oils. But if, if you consider that that oil that you're putting in your frying pan or that you're putting on your salad is actually a very important component, it's just as important as the protein, etc., you want to pay a little attention to it and don't necessarily just buy the, the cheap stuff. It's, it's, it's not just grease. It is an important dietary constituent, and you do want to consider what type of oil you're using. Okay. So I'd like to add to that that um, we should mention that the organic soybean oil might still have that component, that obesogenic component that is present in soybean oil, whether it is genetically modified or not. So, it, yeah, so we cannot really say that organic soybean oil would be healthier. Yeah, we don't, we, we don't know that yet. The take-home message is that Americans are eating too much soybean oil. They're consuming it in their diet. So the question you might say, well, where am I getting it from? I don't buy it. Vegetable oil in this country is largely soybean oil, but it's usually a mix. That's why they call it vegetable oil. There's soybean oil, there's corn oil, there's other things in there. Also, most processed foods, they have to have some sort of oil in there, and it's usually soybean oil. Also, restaurants use soybean oil because it's very cheap and, and it, it works well for them. So everyone's consuming a lot of soybean oil, even if they don't know it. 